Why is it that when I solve a problem that people have tried and failed before, the solution is always stupidly simple. I don't often get to make a video in response to another YouTuber's attempted fix, but today is that day and Linus, man, you were wrong, but you knew you were wrong. In fact, you actually said the correct solution in a different video, but, and really, how can I blame you? How many people are really looking up how to prevent your vibe trackers from disconnecting? Well, we'll find out because uh, this video is actually how to fix it and it's not gonna take that long, guys. So let's get right into it. Hello and welcome. My name is Wolfie, you're watching Greater Than Pie and today we're fixing things again. And again, this one was surprisingly dumb. But before we get into it, let's actually talk about the solution presented by Linus in his video. So Linus ended up doing this whole PC upgrade just so that he could add an add-in card that was actually rather expensive so that he could run every individual vibe tracker into its own USB lane through its own controller. And as somebody who's done the exact same thing and has a very similar video just with a much cheaper card, I could say that that's a logical solution. And normally when you run through the troubleshooting of a USB issue, connectivity issues are usually a combination of data or power. And if you introduce more than enough power, there should be no reason for a device to continuously disconnect. Personally, I was running all of my Vive trackers off of one of these hubs, which has five gigabits of data output and 35 watts per port, which means yeah, it should be more than capable of powering a Vive Tracker dongle, but it wasn't. And on top of that, actually running it through the hub exacerbated the issue that I was having specifically. Now, my tracking has never been perfect. I've got plenty of evidence of the tracking messing up. And if you need a refresher on what the issue actually is, this is what happens. You're playing your game with full body tracking, then all of a sudden, boom, you go spaghetti. And it's because one or more of your trackers has stopped tracking for one reason or the other. Now, the logical next step is maybe I need more base stations. But in Linus's video, he was using four base stations that covered the entire room. It could be base station positioning, but at the same time, these things are actually not sensitive at all. I did add one in here as a troubleshooting step, but I found that that wasn't actually the solution. And if you have two base stations, you're probably fine. So then, what is the solution? Well, well, it's actually been looking you guys in the face this entire time. This looks like a lot, but all it is is one thing. The Vive trackers are horrible at isolating their own frequencies. If they're on top of each other, they cross talk and that causes issues. If they are next to wires that have electricity going through them, they cross talk and have issues. If they are obstructed by an entire PC because they are plugged into the back of that PC, they have issues. Yes, turns out these receivers are incredibly bad. Yes, the receivers themselves are actually bad. The trackers are great and actually have amazing tracking when they're connected properly. So then how does one fix this? And do I need to set up pegboard in my room to do it? The answer is no. Surprisingly, uh, all you really need is probably about $20 in USB extensions and maybe some like wall putty or like wall mounts. I've got these that I bought for this whole project that quite literally, if I really wanted to, I could have set this up in an array. You really just want them spaced out a little tiny bit. That's all you need. I had these spaced out with a gap. There's about an inch gap between each one of them right now and they are sticking up and towards the play space. And my tracking has literally never been better. This is the same setup with the same base stations, the same vibe trackers. It looks significantly better. I can jump around, I can move around, and it's not getting disconnected. The two factors that I believe contribute to this working better is one, having an unobstructed line of sight to your play space, two, moving it closer to your play space, and three, having them spaced out. I still have the power being provided through the same hub. I still have the data going through the same hub. In fact, now my entire headset goes through that same hub. So I know that all that data is going through one line into my computer. Meaning, 
Linus's expensive solution isn't necessary, and it doesn't seem to be an issue with power or, well, tracking in general. So because we can eliminate as many variables as we can, and the one solution that seems to work is this one, it's also the cheapest solution, I would say that that's fixed. Of course, you guys can try it and leave your comments down below to see if this actually finally fixes it for you. I play VR gaming on my second channel where I don't actually show my face. So this has been a thorn in my side that I'm glad that I can finally get off of it. And in reality, if you use something like Tundra trackers, this probably isn't even a problem for you since your dongle is probably in your headset to begin with. Which makes me wonder if the true solution would be to have a Vive headset with dongle plugs everywhere. It's a dumb idea, but it would work probably pretty well. Make like a crown of dongles. Sounds so stupid. You put like a USB hub? I, I, I need to stop because I'm coming up with stupid ideas. All right, that's where we're gonna end it today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed watching this video, consider giving a like, maybe comment, subscribe. Check out down below to see how you can support us. You can check out this shirt, which I designed and I love. It's literally my favorite shirt. And I will see you in the next video. Wolfie, out.